Hello and welcome. My name is Angelo Sokos and I work as a professional musical director and uh, pianist and bassist around the London area in the UK. Uh, so today I'm going to be reviewing the Oyeo uh, 25 key MIDI keyboard. I'll put the uh, full name in the description in case you'd like to have a look at it on Amazon. Uh, the price at the moment on Amazon is about £89, so very competitively priced, and you can also watch out for some discounts. Um, the company have really kindly sent this to me to review, and um, they have actually sent me products from themselves before. I reviewed a wonderful folding keyboard, and uh, as you know, my reviews are very, very honest. So although they've sent it to me, the company are you know sending it because they know I do honest reviews, uh, as many, many of my subscribers uh, which is the reason you guys watch me. Um, okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to show you what you get in the box. I'm going to show you the keyboard and the device and how easy it is to set up. And then I'm going to show you via the door Ableton. Obviously, you can use any door you like, um, but I'll show the door Ableton as an example because that's what I have on my uh, MacBook Pro. So let's get into it. The keyboard uh, comes with a wire and that's it. So you get the keyboard and a wire. And the wire is USB-C on one end to the old type USB on the other uh, so that they cover all bases. I need to use an adapter for my MacBook Pro. It's seriously not a big deal and the adapter was like £2, so no problem. Uh, this is the box that it's presented in and it is really super lovely simple packaging. You just get a cover either end of the uh, keyboard and you get the plastic, obviously as you'd need to, to keep it safe from dust, etc. Um, so that's that bit covered. It really is that simple. It also acts as a nice little stand so you guys can see, see it. Okay, super. Let's switch to a side view and I'll take you around the keyboard. I'm doing everything on the table that my camera's attached to, so if it's a little wobbly, please just bear with me. So here's our side view. Okay, so this is the keyboard in all its glory. Okay, so if we go from this side across, you can see you've got the pads, you get eight pads and you also get eight dials. The pads can be assigned to anything within a MIDI and the dials can as well, which is really, really good. You then get the 25 key keyboards. So you can see each of the keys really, really beautifully presented. And then you get this wonderful OLED display as well, which is really, really super. So on the OLED display, you're able to um, see all the information that's presented from the keyboard, which is really good. You also get some fantastic um, sliders here, which are touch sensitive, which is really, really super good. Um, and those are, those are excellent and work very well too. Okay, so we're just going to see about demonstrating the keyboard now so that you're able to see it along with um, some information from Ableton. So if we switch to an Ableton view, uh, let's minimize my camera a little bit so that you can see it. Um, so there's Ableton behind. And I'm going to use three different um, kind of settings on Ableton. So I'm going to use Contact 7, then we're going to use a piano, a drum kit, and also a bass. So the piano that I'm using is Noir, which is a really, really wonderful uh, piano. There we are, so that's the sound I'm using for that. Then for the drums, I'm using Abbey Road Studio, the Sparkle Kit, and then I'm using the, the J-Bass. Um, so here we go. Now, uh, the only thing that you need to be aware of when you use this into uh, a, a door is that it can control any sound that you put into it, right? So MIDI keyboards don't inherently come with sounds built into them. Uh, you actually use the sounds which are within a door to control it. So although these buttons look great and you can see that they say like division, swing mode, you know, octave, latch, it can do octaves really fluently, it can do transpositions really fluently, it's also got an arpeggiator and it can do tempos as well. Um, the really, really big thing you want to be aware of is that none of that really matters. All you need is a keyboard which has got all these functions which can be assigned into the door and allows you to have enough options to create your music. Um, and this one, I'm not just being polite about it because um, they've sent it to me to review. I mean, as a fact, this one does it all really well and it's got a good enough key bed that I can play in the music that I want to create. So I'm just going to create something on the fly now. I'm going to lay down the drums first and then we will go from there. So uh, I can set it up to record immediately as I've plugged it in. I didn't even need to do anything. I mean, like this isn't me having pre-set it up. I mean, I plugged that in 
and it's ready to go. In Ableton, you can see here at the top right, it shows you if the MIDI is recognized. If you do need to get into sorting out your MIDI, you can just quickly nip to the preferences. Uh, let me just pop those preferences on so you can see. I don't want to mess this up. So you go into live, settings. Uh, yeah, I've already got it ready for you guys to see. And then there's MIDI here and you can select what you want. So you see I've got my Roland Phantom in at the moment. I've got an APC Mini, which I also use. And then here, you, I didn't even need to select anything because it recognizes this keyboard immediately. So that's, you know, that's really wonderful in itself because you don't need to set anything up. And I hate wasting time setting things up. So fantastic from my point of view. Okay, so what we're going to do now is play in some music. So we're going to do the drums first. I always lay down drums first. I'm uh, going to record it, pop a metronome on. Obviously, I'll take the metronome off. But what you guys want to be listening out for thinking, do you want this keyboard, is how it relates to what I'm playing and does it make my music sound realistic. Then I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can assign things to it in any door and that will be it. It's really that simple. MIDI keyboards are amazing to use. So here we go. Uh, pop an octave down so we've got the bass. literally like that that's it and i've got it down obviously i'm showing you just examples yeah so then we're going to pop in some bass with that let's double check that our bass is going to be suitable for what we want and it recognizes the bass really like the touch if i'm soft it's soft if i'm loud it does it as well. If you can hear some key noise, don't worry about that. It's just obviously for my microphone, but I need my mic on so you guys can hear me. Okay, so now we're going to have a go at playing some bass underneath what we've just recorded in. And there we have it. The bass is now recorded too. And then over the top, we'll put some of this beautiful noir piano. This goes like this. Seeing as it's like a MIDI keyboard, and the keys are tiny as well, uh, it's great how much you can manipulate it to get what you want. So cool. And then you've got basically your finished product. You take the metro off, listen back to it. What's really cool as well is if you really need to, you can put in a sustain pedal. So it's a sustain pedal and a MIDI out as well, which is really, really nice to be able to have. So that's that's super great too. So if you want to get that real pianistic sound whilst you're doing it, just pop in a pedal and it'll give you the... It's much smoother. And I can, like that, it's, it's so incredibly responsive. Oh my goodness, like this. Oh, if I want to go angry at the end, can do that as well. Lovely. So that's how it records in, and you can like see have songs like that. And um, some of the important stuff, which I deliberately didn't touch on earlier, is that you do have these octaves, right? So this is so integral in a 25 key instrument because obviously you've got 88 keys on a full piano. So that just for me works first time as well. I can go like that, go like that. The reason the light's staying on is because I'm going up different octaves. What I would love to have seen, but I appreciate the, the cost of the instrument, is that the higher end brands, when you press the octave together, it automatically puts you back to the middle. With this, if I've gone up three octaves now and I go like this, I have to bother to scroll back down them. It's kind of a small thing, but if I was using it on stage on the fly, it's a really important thing that I think should be included on all brands, uh, regardless of the cost. So that's something maybe I'd like to see in the future, but it wouldn't actually stop me from using this in a home studio, uh, but it would stop me from using it on stage uh, within a concert, yeah. But home studio, no big deal, it's totally fine. Uh, it's also got this beautiful um, LED display, which is showing me all the way along what I'm using. Okay, so what we haven't touched on is what runs along the top of the keyboard, right? And those you would kind of want to assign. So for example, I'm going to do it very briefly because I appreciate I'm in Ableton and you might be using a variety of other 
kind of uh, doors. It actually comes with a manual which shows you uh, the other doors which you may like to use with it. Now, um, this camera, the reason I don't use it is because it's at a fixed focal length. So you might see this kind of potentially might be backwards. Um, but that, they are the ones they've said. And obviously, it's a multitude. You can use this universally with any single door that you wish to. Um, how I sign those, for example, on Ableton is unbelievably simple. I press my MIDI button, which engages MIDI mode and everything goes blue. I then uh, say I would like to have my volume. Volume will be really integral that you have. So let's find our volume. Where is it? Oh, it's here. So I press that, that's the volume button. Now I'm just gonna turn one of the knobs for volume, automatically recognizes it, and I can go ahead and do that for other things. So I can assign any of these. So number one, to turn it on and off, I could put it as like one of the buttons. You can see as I'm pressing the button, it's lighting up. It will assign to this and then when I'm out of MIDI mode, I can press the button and it's going to do anything. So I can literally make any button on here, regardless of what it says, do anything here on the fly. And now it means I maybe don't need to touch my computer because I could set this to record. I could set this, which is obviously the it's piano at the moment. I could set that to record, I could set that to play, I can set that to stop, I can set that to go back to the beginning. So I'm kind of doing everything here on the fly. Uh, I really, really like it. And uh, sometimes I get sent things which, you know, in the future may not be uh, useful to, for the musician, but you'd love to review them. Uh, in this case, this is going to be added to my collection of things I use in my home studio. I think it's really, really wonderful. Um, and I actually, I know it's always, <laughs> it's dubious someone sending you stuff and then saying, you know, that you really like it, go ahead and buy it. But I think if you are looking for a, uh, a, a 25 key keyboard that's got the newer kind of style touch sensitivity and you've got the the warranties and things like that um, for the price and if you wait maybe for a tiny discount I honestly don't think you can go wrong uh, it's really really good and for me as a professional musician the touch weight on it is uh, as best as you can get from any kind of MIDI keyboard it is comparable with higher ones I've used if you want like the utmost perfection if you're an actual pianist you would need a larger piano uh, piano and keyboard and obviously maybe touch weights like the the professional models um, however that isn't what this is meant to be this is meant to be for people enjoying things in their home studio even if you want it to sound professional um, if you have any questions about it please do ask I'm always open to add on parts to reviews so that you can have more information in any of the products um, and please do uh, let me know so thank you very much for watching and I'll put the link for this in the description if you'd like to take a look for yourself. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you again soon.